across the ocean, perhaps this is, I don't know, good night. So wherever you are, um, let us let us know when you join us, where you're joining us from. You can pop in the comment section. I love that the technology that we have um, available to us nowadays allows us to all connect as if we were standing next to each other. Well, you know, the whole social distancing thing, but as if we were all together. So um, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Let us know where you're joining us from. I don't, the gentleman who's joined me today needs no introduction, Dr. Neil Cohen. Sherman College's vice president, a great friend of mine. Um, I got to say, if you don't know Dr. Neil and Randy Cohen, you are missing out on two amazing human beings. I'm so thankful that I got to spend time not only with them from a business and so in um, business perspective and, and as colleagues, but also got to go to their home um, last year. And that was a really special time. And so um, Dr. Neil, welcome and thanks for joining me today. Well, I am just honored. Thank you, Dr. Barber, for having me. Thank you for inviting me onto your show. This is just incredible. I love the work that you're doing. You just are so determined and we need to be determined like you're determined. So, so I'm just, you're my example. So let's keep moving this. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and, you know, it really is true that we're in this game called life and we're in it to win it together. And united is when we win. Um, and <clears throat> I, I think now more than ever, it's time as a profession to come together and to recognize, you know, there's always been this infighting in our profession because we don't necessarily have the same philosophy or we don't, this the same. And I just, I, I want to call all of your attention to your closest friendships. The people that you're the closest friends with, do you agree on everything with them? Like even your spouse, do you agree on everything? Do you do everything the same if you're raising children? Does your spouse bathe your children the same way that you do? Do they dress them the same? They don't. And yet we all still operate together. And so I'm just calling all of us as chiropractors to focus on the fact that we have way more in common than we have dissimilar. And one of those things that we have in common is our, our profession was founded on 33 principles. Our profession was founded on philosophy. Even if you don't speak the philosophy in your practice, that is the foundation that whether you are ACA or ICA or whatever you are in whatever school you went to, we all have that in common. And we all have in common that right now, we also want to help our community. Right now, we all have in common that our lives have all changed in drastic ways that we didn't see coming. And yet, it's the very basis of our philosophy, adaptability. So Neil, let's pick it up from there. Um, in our pre-show pre or pre-life conversation, adaptability. Share with others what you were just telling me about. Well, you know, when we understand chiropractic and, you know, we never stop learning. So I'm not, I'm not speaking to you from glory. I have, I have not arrived. I, I love chiropractic and I want to know more about it every day of my life because chiropractic is about life. But one of the main things that we do deal with is adaptation and we have to adapt. Life is about adapting. It's not just adapting every day. It's adapting every moment every second that we're alive and things change you know we have storms in our lives and this is just a storm that we're going through and storms do pass and this will pass this is a blip on the radar but what we have to do is we have to look at this blip and we have to say what can we gain from this what understanding what can we learn from this well we've learned that our freedom is priceless that's number one and chiropractic is about freedom and, and potentially, if you allow yourself to be distracted by everything that's going on, you are relinquishing your freedom. You are essential. You have to understand that. Regardless of what other people believe, you are essential because as long as subluxation is there, you are, you are essential. We need to check people. We need to make sure that they're functioning at their highest level. <laughs> so that's our job. That's our purpose. And with that purpose comes an identity. But you have to check what are your beliefs and what are your values. If you believe everything that you're being told on the outside and your values are, are such where you can be swayed to and fro by everything that you hear, then in fact you lose 
your purpose. You lose your identity. And we have to stay rock solid. It, you know, it's just my observation about this whole thing that chiropractic, this is an opportunity. This is the greatest opportunity that we've had in a really long time to move away from the pain model. We have to move away from the pain model. Yes, that's what people believe we are. They talk about tipping the scales. Well, we tipped the scales a long time ago. And people think chiropractic is about back pain. And we have to help people understand it's not. And what better situation than what we're currently going through socially than to help people understand it's about adapting to the environment. You know, um, so for me, this is just a very positive thing. And we need to look at it from the perspective of what can we do, not what are we unable to do. You know, so this is this is going to be perfect because we have a totally different perspective here. And so you all will be able to see live and in action how we can all still love each other and still have respect for one another, but not align on every single point. I think chiropractic is about pain because pain interferes with someone's maximum expression of who they are. Um, that could be pain in your heart. And as a result of pain in your heart, you yell at your family. That could be pain in your heart. And as a result, you, re you retreat from life. It could be like, literally you are in physical pain and that interference interferes with your maximum expression of life. You know, I, I think the, the opportunity for us right now is to say, look, your body has the ability to be well. Your body has the ability to adapt to whatever circumstances provided it's not subluxated, right? And subluxation comes from physical, chemical, and emotional stress greater than our body's ability to adapt and cope with causes subluxation. <laughs> it's like me trying to talk to you with my hand over my mouth. And right now, in our lives, there is massive amounts of interference happening. Physical stress, like people are working at home like this, or kids are working at home like this, right? Chemical stress, oh my gosh, how many times can we possibly wash our hands, right? Like how many times can we, like when, when you're wearing a mask like this, that definitely, in my opinion, interferes with your ability to breathe at optimum levels and oxygenate, oxygenate your body, right? Then, then the emotional stress. And so now is the time for our chiropractic philosophy. And, and I think it's so vital that we let our community know, like, hey, if you're struggling with these things, don't go there. Come here. Let me check your spine and your nerve system for subluxation. It's what could be causing your pain. It's what could be causing your body to re react more to allergies. It could be causing all of these different things. I don't know, but let me check you and determine. <clears throat> the emergency room is not the place for you. Or even, you know, even um, I think this is an amazing opportunity to even align with, with attorneys who you know, are helping those who've been in car accidents. Our daughter got in a car accident in amidst all of this stuff and got hit at over 25 miles an hour. Like that's pretty substantial. And, and obviously she didn't go to the emergency room because there's all kinds of stuff going on there. You know, <clears throat> I sent her to a friend of mine who's, um, who does a really great job in, and, and PI, um, you know, and, and vehicular accident kind of stuff. And, and so my point here is, is Dr. Dr. Neil is saying, Hey, we're more than pain. And I'm saying, Hey, we're more than pain. And this is where we, we include pain. And this is where we step up to say, this is the place to start. No matter what in your life, this is the place to start. I can help you come into my office. So what do you think about that? Well, I think you're I think you're right. And I think we can collaborate uh, on that because when we think about dis-ease, pain is a form of dis-ease. And I understand that. So let me just qualify where I was coming from. Um, I have a heart for people that are not in pain, but are are diseased. And I have a heart for people that are not in touch with their pain. Because pain is something that you have to be sensitive to. And a lot of people are not, they're, they're numb to their pain. They've, they've um, made excuses for their pain. 
they've been taught that uh, pain is a bad thing. And I think our philosophy teaches that pain is a good thing because it allows us to deal with what we're dealing with. So don't misunderstand me from the perspective of, um, um, of the body being able to adapt to the things that people that, that the media is saying is out there. I think those of us that are under chiropractic care are going to do the best. And I think we're going to do the best regardless of what's out there. So the opportunity that I was speaking of had to do with the body's ability to function at its highest level, regardless of whether you're in pain or not. Because, you know, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of ways to take care of your pain. And if chiropractic is just one of those ways, then people will seek out whatever ways that they resonate with to take care of their pain. My suggestion would be that chiropractic be as essential as it is to uh, eat or drink or breathe and, and, and sleep. These are the things that, you know, to me, chiropractic is, is that essential. And uh, to wait until you think you need it, um, you know, that, that's probably not the best way, although that's what people have, uh, have bought from us over the years based on the way that we've promoted ourselves. You know, Reggie Goldstein, <laughs> chiropractic is the poorest promoted profession in the history of man. He said that many years ago, and that resonated with me because even today when we talk to people, we have to qualify who we are in order for them to understand um, what chiropractic is, unless they're in pain. And then if they're in pain, then they're, they're gonna, we don't need to qualify ourselves. We're, we're very much mm. qualified in their mind. I, I love what you said about, you know, going back to essential um, and in and, and order, you know, I, I think one of the things that makes this conversation so important that we all are having with our practice members and with our community is you don't have to run in fear. Your body, like your nerve system, your immune system has been kicking virus ass since you were born. Like this isn't something new. This isn't like your body has been training for this. This is exactly what you've been training for, like an Olympian um, or a woman who's pregnant. I, I, I've told this story several times and it's a little embarrassing to even say like, I finally got it, but that's okay. So last summer, Lauren Klum, Dr. Lauren Klum posted on her daughter's birthday and just like kind of recounted her, her birth story. And, you know, it's her first child. And so she was in tons of pain um, in labor and like had started kind of like doubting herself. And then Dana, um, Dana Cavell Clum showed up um, and was like, well, Lauren, you're supposed to be in pain. It's labor. Mm. And just like that new context, that new perspective of it's supposed to hurt, right? Like it doesn't feel good to push a baby out like no part of that feels good but to get like you've been preparing for this your body was designed for this it's just like COVID like your body was designed to be well your body was designed to be able to fight it and in order to give it the best weapon like you know like the weapons of mass destruction against COVID chiropractic adjustments eating well sleeping well supplementation rest fun, spend time with your family, plan for your future. Like all of these things are so important. And these are the exact things that are necessary in order to <clears throat> adapt well for this thing that we've all been preparing for. Um, and, and I love that what you said that like as chiropractors, we've been like, this is our jam is adaptation. And, and we had both been before we went live talking about circumstances in our lives that came up that we had no idea they were coming. And so what happened? We stopped, breathe, no. and simplify, right? Just like, um, you know, Neil was talking about when they had a hurricane, like they, they had forewarning it was coming, but he didn't expect the, the roof to be blown off his office. Like we had November 30th, 2018, an earthquake. Mm. Stop, breathe, simplify. You know, like my husband came home, um, after, you know, like, I don't know, an hour after. And I was just like numb. And he's like, 
hey, babe, everything's okay. Let's get to work. Stop, breathe, simplify. If, if you're Christians like Neil and I, then you stop, you pray, you breathe, you simplify, and you get to work. And this is that. So let this be your message, chiropractor and student. Get to work. Right. And I think, it all work. Comes, I think it comes down to expectations. You know, you have to understand, you know, you talked about the uh, birthing and the expectations. If you expect it to be um, undoable, you, you, you have these, um, you have that sense that it's going to be very, very bad. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's the encouragement that we can give one another and, you know, help to show that many have been through this before. You're going to get through this. The, the end result is going to be amazing. You're going to get to hold your child. You know, all of this is great. And, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. People have an expectation that what is out there, these germs and all these things are going to get them. You see, that's the expectation. And that's why the response is so much an outside in response, because we have to protect ourselves from what's coming to get us. And as chiropractors, what we say is, wait, these things are out there all the time. And it's our ability to be strong from within that's going to keep them at bay. And so it's all about expectations. And what is your expectation? If you expect that you're, you know, you're a weak, a weak uh, living thing and you don't understand adaptation, well, then you must protect yourself. But if you think, oh my goodness, you know, I'm, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm eating right, I'm doing all the right things, I'm having fun, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my life going. Now you realize, you know what, there's still a possibility. There's always the potential. There's always the potential. But the promise is this. The promise is if you're free from nerve interference, you're living clear. That's the promise of chiropractic. And living clear doesn't always mean you don't have pain. And you see, that's really where I was coming from before. In the, we have to, we have to understand chiropractors, not necessarily people out there. This is for chiropractors. We have to understand the promise. The promise is that we can get you clear. What that looks like, the potential, you're going to have to let me know. You're going to have to share that with me and let me know because I don't know what full potential looks like on anybody. And and you know, you bring up a really good point about repetition. So the first law of learning is repetition. So it, it's okay if every day you're reminding yourself of how strong your body is. It's okay if every day mm. you're reaching out to your practice members in another way and reminding them like you were designed for this. Like your body is strong. We can fight this together. This is what it looks like. This is what subluxation is. Like the 33 principles, um, you know, the, um, I'm, I'm starting a series today of every day I'm going to go live on my own Facebook page as if I were in practice right now. And if you want to just model what I'm saying that I would be saying if I were in practice in a five minute Facebook live to just like reinforce that commitment in your practice members. Because remember, when we're in a state of chaos, we go to our highest level of understanding. And maybe they were new to your practice. Maybe, maybe now they're just being threatened. And I really and truly believe that the chaos that a lot of people are living in, it isn't because they don't know what's happening in the future. That's not it because that's every day. We don't know what's happening. Like you don't know if someone is going to show up on your doorstep today and say, Dr. Cohen, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's been a tragedy. Like we don't know, right? We don't, we don't know if our identity is going to be stolen. We don't know. There's so many things we don't know. So I don't think that's what's causing the stress. And I don't think the stress is because things keep changing. Hello, that's been life, right? Like you went to chiropractic college, life changed. You got married, life changed. You had a child, life changed. You graduated, life changed. You had an associate, life changed. Like life is always changing. It's a sign of life. So it's not those two things that we keep saying. Here's what it is. It's that our paradigms are being challenged over and over and over again. And so if we're not grounded then 
we start really questioning and doubting ourselves. And so listen to this. When we fail to keep commitments to ourselves, it erodes our self-confidence. When we Ooh. fail to keep commitments to ourselves, it erodes our self-confidence. So then when our self-confidence is eroded, we look on the outside for verification of, am I relevant? Am I important? What do I believe? So if you're, if someone is doing that, whether chiropractor, student, or practice member, then they look outside and what is the media saying? Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. So then we have to go back to the very beginning and say, okay, <clears throat> what do I believe? And if that's a daily, like an hour by hour, what do I believe? I believe my body is strong. I believe my body is strong. Why do I believe my body is strong? Well, <clears throat> because the entire being is controlled by my nerve system. My nerve system is how my brain speaks to all my cells and tissues. I know my chiropractor has taught me or as a chiropractor, I know that when my body is free of subluxation, it can be well. My brain can speak to all my cells and tissues and, and then they can adapt at the highest ability. Have I been checked? Yep, I have. Have I eaten right? Yep, I have. Have I gotten a good enough sleep? Well, I haven't really been getting great sleep. Okay, what's one thing that I can do? Not 10. What's one thing that I can do today and to improve my, my quality of sleep? Well, I could get some fresh air. Great, commit to that. Do you see, like, just keep going back one step, one step, one step and asking ourselves questions. And, and I just encourage all the docs and the students watching this, like your practice members are looking for you to be an anchor. They want to see that you're strong. So tell them the truth. And in so doing, you remind yourself of the truth and then make small commitments. So around the boot camp, it's MF3. M is me. F, the first F is family, future, fun. Every day set out with your MF3 at the beginning of the, the day. The first M is how am I taking care of myself today? And it could be the things that you're always doing that indicate that. Like I'm doing my juice and taking my supplements. All right, great. That's my M. Your F, like how are you caring for your family or how is your family caring for those outside of your family unit? Just like one small thing identify what that is and then hold firm and follow through with that. Then future, there is an end to this. What step will you take today to put yourself in the future? And remember, as a leader, your responsibility is to cast vision, create culture and hold accountable. So how are you casting that vision out there of what's coming after COVID? And then fun, don't forget to have fun. So all of those things go back and remind us and, and allow us to build that self-confidence to stand firm in our paradigms. It's not that life is changing and it's not that we don't know the future. That is not at all why people are feeling stressed. They're feeling stressed because of their paradigms. So revisit those and chiropractors, I'm asking you to share the chiropractic story every day in a myriad of ways, share the story. All right, sorry, I didn't mean to go on. For <laughs> good. You, you gave me so many thoughts. I was like, I, I don't know if I can remember a ball, but I will say <laughs> this, just, a, you know, in congruency with what you're saying is, and I tell this to my kids all the time, it's not what <clears throat> happens to you, it's your response to what happens to you. You have to understand where, you know, it's all about how you are responding. The other thing that I want to mention is constructive survival values and destructive survival values. You were talking a little bit about that and the things that we can do and the self-talk that we have. So we need to practice constructive survival values. Again, I want to always bring this around to chiropractic and chiropractic philosophy. The other thing that I want people to know is innate is always doing the right thing. Regardless of whether you have cancer or you don't have cancer, innate is always doing the right thing. You have 100% innate intelligence as long as you're alive. Zero when you're dead, 100% no matter what you have. So you have to understand that. And I do want to say one more thing, too. I think mm -hmm. with innate being doing the right thing all the time and we have to do the right thing all the time, we have to we have to realize that there's there's two motivations for us to do things. One is transactional. We do something so we can get something. You know, there's a lot of that that goes on. And I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. That's that's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that there's something that's better. And what's better is to be transformational. When we do something, we want to transform people. 
And that's what we, we have this opportunity to transform people during this time. You know, if we look at everything as just a transaction, then we miss the transformation. So we need to be transformational. We need to see the human side of things, not just, not just the business side of things, but the human side of things. And, and, and the business, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good or bad. But we have, if you're thinking transformationally and everything you think, say, and do, I think that is huge. And that's a great way to, to uh, navigate through the storms of your life. How can I help somebody else who's going through something is really the question that you want to ask yourself. It's kind of like my parents always taught us, if you don't feel like you, you have a friend, be a friend. Right, yeah. like be a friend first, and then you'll find you have lots of friends. So I'm, I'm going to credit Demi McConkie from the Wealth Factory. Um, she's become a really great friend of mine, mind, and I got to be on the Sole Purpose Leadership Team at the Wealth Factory this winter. Um, and we were on a call yesterday about this very subject of transformation. Think about this: transform, then enroll. So help individuals transform so that they can better enroll in their own life, mm. right? Like enroll in that new context, enroll in that new perspective and that new lens that the transformation, you know, is in, is ongoing if they're more enrolled in the outcome of their life. So what happens after the understanding why is the understanding of the paradigms, of the principles, of the philosophy important? Because it helps you more enroll in the responsibility of your life and, and understanding health and well-being. So awesome. transform, then enroll. And that's really, that's really our responsibility as, as chiropractors and um, as, as health coaches for our practice members is to help them more enroll in their own life to the degree that they that they have an understanding. So that may mean that we go back again and discuss the transformation. Well, we me, can go back as many times as is necessary. And that's beautiful. <clears throat> it sounds like above, down, inside out. Because you transform and then you take the action step. And then you make, you know, that's your outside, that's your inside out. So it's beautiful. Um, you know, we do need to have an action step and we have to, uh, um, realize, you know, you told me this, Barbara, and I love this. You told me this probably three, four, five years ago when you sat in my office and we, I think we might have met for the first time. You said the greatest gift that you can give yourself is to know yourself. And I absolutely love that. That has been one of my anchors for since you said it. And I believe me, I forget a lot of stuff, but I never forgot. <laughs> I have to credit my daddy with that one. So can I give you an upgrade I've learned about that? Sure, absolutely. It's, it's to know thyself, our own physiology. So Mel Robbins, her new book is called Take Control of Your Life. Um, and she goes through how what really happens in life is we get triggered and then we have a physiology from that trigger, whether it's something happy or something sad or I, I feel like I'm not relevant or whatever. So it, it leads to a physiological change, whether it's my stomach kind of is a little upset or I start crying, like that's a physiological response, right? Or my hands get sweaty or I get that lump in my throat. That physiology then leads to a thought or a series of thoughts, an action and a consequence. That's how we develop habits. Mm. And that's really how we develop our paradigms, right? So know thyself is really know thy physiology and take inventory when your physiology changes. What was my trigger? because that trigger now sets up a whole cascade of responses after that. And really and truly, you're probably not gonna change that many triggers and physiologies in your life, but you get the opportunity to rewrite everything after that. So the, um, you know, something that I think is really common for chiropractors is, is that, that fear of rejection. Like, I just want them to like me and it doesn't feel good to be rejected. And when I do this exercise, with clients and I go back and I ask them what happened to you the first time you remember that physiology 98% of the time it's back in their youth like I remember being called on in science class and everyone laughed at me right so now when they're getting triggered in their practice 
all of those years that they got triggered and had that physiology and that long list of thoughts after that physiology is what comes racing in in that moment to how they now feel. And then they take the same action that they've always taken and get the same consequences. So until we go back to the, our physiology and know our physiology and take responsibility for everything after that, we'll just keep going off and going off. And remember, every, like we're triggering each other all the time like a pinball machine, right? So I say something that triggers Neil. And then he has all of this stuff after it that has nothing to do with me. And then he does something in response to that that then triggers me. And now I go off in this direction. And that's why it's so important don't take things personally. In your practice, recognize you're there to serve your practice members. You're there to serve them and to find out what is their response? What is their level of, of transformation that they desire? And be really mindful of that trigger, physiology, thought, action, and then consequence. It's so cool. I love listening to this because it gets my mind going in such a way. You know, it makes me think about uh, something else somebody <clears> taught. A uh, young man, young chiropractor, supporter of Sherman College, upper cervical guy, Grant Dennis. He said uh, in one of his talks at Sherman College, he said, in chiropractic, you need a thick skin and a short memory. And, and I love it because that really takes the whole feeling thing out of it. You know, many people are feelings oriented people. And we become feelings oriented, oriented people, as you say, from what happens in childhood, because our childhoods are basically performance based. We're performance based. Everything that we get an accolade for has to do with our performance. What you get on your report card, what you get on your test, you know, and all of these different things. And then if you got a 90 and your mom said, well, why couldn't you get a 95? Now you feel like a failure. So here is the reason why we take this into adulthood is because we had fundamentally a performance-based childhood and that's transactional and we have to get back to transformational and you know and what that we're in the transformation business so we do need a thick skin we do need a short memory we do need to know our own physiology i love that that you've you brought it to that level because then we can recognize we recognize what's happening within our own nervous system and we can choose to avoid it or not see that's where it comes out it's like looking at something sticking out of the ground i can kick it with my foot every time i walk by or i can say to myself you know that thing's there i'm gonna quit kicking that i gotta i gotta realize i gotta put the mental picture in my head that when i walk around the bed i'm not gonna hit my foot on that on that on that wheel anymore and so it's interesting i love that you brought it to that physiological level that's cool yeah and so and and we're probably like not necessarily avoiding it, but more so like I get to write a new, like never give somebody else the pen that writes the story of your life. You take that pen back. And so what's happened is, is like throughout our lives, then somebody else is writing that. And, and remember this, parents, listen to me here. And David Fletcher helped me, helped me see this, that when we're in stress mode obviously our neurology changes right and one of the things that changes is the firing of our facial nerves so a child senses vibrationally a change in their parent right mm -hmm. and observes the changes in their face and then watches how mom and dad now go from that physiology so then that teaches them what to do in stress, in stress, um, in times of stress. So that's where um, I can't remember who Monica Berger at the Peds boot camp that we had at Sherman said that we can trace back stress responses 14 generations. So the cool thing about understanding our physiology is now we get to decide I'm going to change my thoughts. When I feel this, it's not that it's bad that you're feeling that. Please don't hear me that I'm saying it's bad to feel that physiology and to be triggered. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying stop. Stop and just lean into that physiology. Because remember, we're really at any given time in our lives, especially as an adult, we're four phases, right? We're, we're the child that's screaming and, and wanting attention and we're fearful. Like that's what a child does, right? Then we're the adolescent, the teenager who's rebellious and is going to like, push the norm and like, ugh, 
I'm making it happen. Then there were the 40 to 50 year old who thinks we know what all the answers, right? And then we get into that like elderly stage of life where we're wise. Well, until you've hit those stages, it's still important to honor those little pieces of who we still are. So right now when you're afraid, you're really just being a child, which is okay, lean in and feel all of that and then decide from this, how do I want my new thoughts to be when I'm feeling this way? Does that make sense? Like what, yeah. what, what, what new prescription do I want from my life from this physiology? Um, so from, uh, you know, like this is why it's so important as parents and even in our practices to be mindful that it's, it's an energetic thing as well, right? When someone triggers you in your practice, I'm, I'm actually wondering what if instead of having thick skin, we had thick, thin skin because of love? And we instead upgraded our thought process to it's not about me. Like that person feels safe enough that they can take off the facade and just be themselves in that moment. The only reason that we want to have thick skin is because we made it about ourselves. It's not about us. It's about that practice member who who made the choice that day to get in their car and to come to our office and give us the privilege of serving them. So in that service, to take down the barriers and lean into them for the transformation that can happen and enroll them in a new context about their life. What if? Love the perspective. It's so cool to listen to the perspective and how you engage in that that empathetic understanding of people versus the man side who says, go on next, we got to move on. You know, I love it. I love it. And you know what? It's, I don't think that anybody's really wrong or right. It's just, it's how you, it's your perspective and how you deal with it. How much time do you have in your office to, you know, uh, you know, lean in, let, let people lean in on you and so on and so forth. What kind of culture, do you want to create within your office, within your life? What is your purpose? What is your identity? What are your values? What are your beliefs? You know, you talk about your behaviors and your environment and, 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 and your specific environment. All of these things play a huge role in, in you know, your, your interactions and, you know, whether they're transformational or transactional. But I think the recognition, you know, um, you can, you know, you have to, acknowledge something to be able to deal with that. And I mm -hmm. think that that's what, you know, that's what I, that's what I'm getting out of this conversation is, you know, we have to acknowledge that there's different ways of looking at things and, you know, it, it's okay to look at it and we're all on different journeys. You know, mm -hmm. we have to collaborate without compromising who we are and, and realize that we're in, and as I said in the beginning, we're constantly learning, we're growing in knowledge, we're growing in grace, we're growing in love, we're growing in wisdom. As you mentioned, as we get older, we're growing in understanding and we have to just continue to, to be open vessels. Jay Comerick's uh, movie um, where, uh, that he did, 104 Minutes, where life adjusted, one of the finest movies I've ever seen in my life, and I mean that, because it talked about, it talked about the difference between being vigilant or being loving and being open. And so is your heart open or are you vigilant? Are you a protective individual all the time or are you an open individual? And sometimes we need to be protective. But at the end of the day, as chiropractors, we need to be open. We need to be open and we need to be able to accept people at all different levels and, and be able to meet them where they're at so we can bring them to the understanding that they are great within themselves, that they have this incredible ability to heal that they can bring them, that they, they can get to wherever level in life that they want to be, but they have to believe in themselves and we have to share that with them. Yes. And, and growing that belief is one step at a time, like make commitments to yourself and keep them, even if they're small, like I'm not going to sleep in past eight o'clock today. Okay, great. Like commit to that, fulfill it. it. And your, your self-confidence will, will grow. And, you know, Grant Cardone, one of his sayings is, I never lose, I either win or I learn. So if we're looking at interactions with practice members on 
being thick skinned, what if there's a lesson from that person? Because some of our greatest teachers maybe don't seem like teachers in the moment, right? Like Exactly, exactly. And oh. if we're willing to step back and go, you know what? I never lose. I either win or I learn. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be a learning opportunity. Cool, bring it on. Because I truly believe, you know, like one of the reasons I was so curious in practice was I'm 100% convinced I don't have time to learn every lesson, but I can learn from other people going through circumstances and then sharing them with me. And then when that circumstance comes up, I can be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Neil taught me about that. Or I remember when Andrea said, but, 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 when she dealt with that, like I can learn that here. And that's, that's where that conversation leads to connection, connection to relationship and relationship to commitment. But it's so important in our conversations with our practice members, it's, it's clarification, points of agreement, solution. Make sure that you clarify what are they saying, get on the same page with them. There's some point of agreement that you can get to and then offer a solution, but don't rush in with the solution until you have gone through that process, it's no different than adjusting. We check somebody, determine where you're subluxated, how does your body want to be adjusted, you're gonna get adjusted, and then I'm gonna post check to make sure I did what I set out to do. Is something else now showing up, now that I cleared the subluxation there, is there another area that now is saying, okay, now that you've cleared that one, check this one out. That's why we do a post check. And it's the same thing as clarification, points of agreement, solution. So Neil, as we wrap this up, what final words of encouragement do you want to leave our audience with today? I want to, I want to tell our audience that they have been chosen. They've been chosen to be exactly where they are right now. And they need to understand that um, everything, everything that they're doing right now is going to have a difference for eternity. Every choice that you make, every decision that you have is going to make a difference forever. And I want people to understand how powerful their choices are. I also want them to understand that the situation that we're in is, is very temporary. And what can, we, what can we garner from this? What can we learn from this? How can we get out and be better because of it? I see in my neighborhood families together walking. I see people, they're eating dinner at home because, you know, you just can't go out to eat anymore. There's all the, so many positive things that are happening. What are you doing to bring this to the, uh, to the level that it becomes a constructive survival value for you? I also would like to just let folks know Sherman's got a brand new website. Uh, I want people to check it out. We're so proud of this website. I'm so proud of our students who are so determined to be taught virtually this quarter. We're doing distance learning, online learning, and I've got to tell you, we're in our fourth week, and it's been so positive, so amazing. Our faculty, uh, and you know Dr. Dooley, uh, you've been speaking with him, they've come up with this incredible curriculum that has allowed our students to continue to learn. Uh, we have an amazing staff, an amazing um, uh, uh administrative team and executive team. Sherman College is a very, very special place. Uh, last uh, last week, a week ago Friday, uh, and every Friday we do virtual tours uh, for prospective students. We had five or six students each week. Nice. And it is amazing. So we have not stopped. We <laughs> are still going. Uh, we are still accepting students, um, uh, perspectives and visits, and it's just become online. And so it's forced us into a situation that's making Sherman College even better. So I just want to leave you with those final words. Yeah, and, and for those of you who, um, you know, I got to just like give a huge shout out to Dr. Neal. I, I connect him with prospective students all the time. And, you know, obviously he has an incredibly important position at Sherman College and he still takes the time to respond to them, to get on the phone with them, to let them know you are of great value. So Neil, just to like give you a public shout out, thank you for doing that because that, I mean, that speaks volumes about your heart. It speaks volumes about Sherman College. Um, and, and I can only imagine how that person feels to think like, I'm kind of a nobody. Like I haven't even committed to going to Sherman yet, but here's the vice president of the school 
like being willing to like number one, even Facebook message me back and number two, get on the phone with me. And so I just encourage all of you, um, if you know of somebody who's want, who's considering, and maybe they're not even considering, but you see something in them that would like signals they're going to be a great chiropractor, Facebook message them with, with Dr. Neil and, and he'll take it from there. Like they already have the systems in place. Like you said, even you're in, even during COVID systems in place to help people take that next step, not 50 paces ahead, but just that next step. And, and let's look for opportunities to raise up just amazing chiropractors. And I just want to encourage all of you, like this has been no surprise to God. Um, for those of you who are uh, also Christians, um, like this is our time to shine for those of you who don't have a relationship with the Lord. And this has really just brought up so much doubt in your mind. Please reach out to us if we can pray with you or, yeah. or um, read, read scripture with you. I know my husband and I have been spending more time in the word together. I told him, I told him the other day, I said, babe, when you have to go back to the office, I don't want to know, like, just make it that morning you get up and go, because I'm going to be so sad when, when you're not home with me every day, it's been a, just a beautiful time for us. And, and for those of you who, <clears throat> even if we don't know each other, well, if you're struggling, the first thing I'm going to say, like, let's pray together. I'm not asking you to pray, awesome. but um, I'm, I would love to pray for you. If there's something that you need help with, reach out to us. Like that's the strongest step to ever take that indicates strength when you ask for help. So um, Dr. Neil, thank you so much. Give Randy a big hug for me today. To all of you, God bless you. Go thank hard today. You are victorious. Um, so step into that victory and, and win. God bless. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. See ya. Bye.